Okay, listen, I know it's a week night. I know that I know what the enemy is going to do. Okay, but listen, this is Yahweh's Okay, let's, let's plug in, all right? It's so hard to plug in after that. We are under such an anointing. I can see the cloud right over this congregation. I can see the cloud. We are under such an anointing right now. Blow your mind if you can see it. It is amazing. Yahweh has given us an outpouring tonight. Hallelujah! Yahweh is told. How many feel happy in Yahweh? How many feel excited about who he has made you to be? Remember you were a nobody and now you are a giant growing in the kingdom? Part two from where we begin last Shabbat, raising your tabernacle. Exodus 40, Shemot chapter 40. Part two and verse 16. Shh. Parents, I expect you to keep your children, not somebody else to keep your children. You keep your children quiet, please. Not being mean, I just want to do it decently in an order. I know they can be quiet, okay? Moshe did according to all that Yahweh commanded him. And again, forgive me, this is not going to be a typical message. I need to get through it to get to your questions. So he did. It came to pass in the first month, notice, verse 17, Shemot 40, 17. It came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was raised up. So the first month is the month for Yahweh to do what? Raise up your tabernacle. Who do we learn on Shabbat was the tabernacle of Yahweh? You are. You are the tabernacle of Yahweh. You are the temple of Yahweh. This is your day to raise yourself up. Allow Yahweh to raise you up. More stability, more commitment, more fortitude, more strength, and to strengthen those things that remain. Amen? So on the first month, that's today, on the first day, that's today, I believe one, Exodus 40, 17, the tabernacle was raised up, part two of this message, raising your tabernacle. That's that word, I love that word, tabernacle in Spanish. It's so cool, it's such a neat word. What's that word? No, no, that's a different one. It's really neat, no. Hmm? What does it mean? I came across it, maybe I'm wrong, but it's a really neat word. That's too Jewish. It doesn't sound Jewish. Let's, let's move on. Second year, listen, the tabernacle was raised up. The second year they came out of Mitzrayim, which symbolizes a renewing or renewed covenant on New Year's Day. Yahweh raised up a renewal in Israel on New Year's Day. That's a wonderful time to be raised up and strengthen our, the points in our life that are weak with Yeshua. New Year's Eve, I'll be one today and tomorrow. <coughs> Pardon me, it's a time to raise up and be strengthened in what remains. Some of the things you and I have done for Yahweh and we have not used our gifts for Yahweh have laid dormant and um, guess what? There's not a lot of stuff remaining. We've got to allow Yahweh to raise up our tabernacle. We are the tabernacle of Yahweh. Amen. We are the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. So Aviv 1 is the day he will raise up the tabernacle. Have any of you ever read Gilead chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7, when he presents what? 12,000 from each of the what? 12 tribes of Israel or the 144,000 Jewish Billy Grahams, right and wrong. There are 144,000 Israelites, they're not Billy Grahams, neither are they all Jewish. Some are Jewish, some are non-Jewish. That raising up, listen, of the 144,000 will be on New Year's. <coughs> Yahweh never changes. The same way he anointed the tabernacle and raised up the tabernacle in Israel, he will anoint 144,000 during the Great Tribulation <clears throat> when all the, those who have the mark of the beast, Islam, will who worship the beast led by the false prophet. Do you know any false prophets that, whose name begins with an M? You've got to get that book. Because we've got to prep you for the true understanding of the book of Revelation. It's not the Catholic Church. It's not Rome. Baloney. Okay? Rome is not surrounded by seven mountains. It has seven hills. And the Aramaic Greek word is mountains, not hills. This beast is not a mystical character that will come on CNN. It is a current religion that people are worshipping the beast. Right now, on television, as they cut off heads and fingers and, 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 and legs and body parts, they are now worshipping the beast. Why the whole believing world will be deceived because we're looking for a beast to come out of Rome with a papal crown. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> You need to get that book now. Islam, beast, or peace. 
but we won't go there today. We're going to talk about that over the next few months. I'm telling you, I have been deceived. I admit that to you. The same way I was deceived with the pre-tribulation rapture, I've been deceived with end-time events. Now I know that I know that I know that I know. If Yahweh destroys Rome, the world economy would mosey on like it never, it would just keep going. But if Yahweh destroys Mecca, the spiritual center of Islam, and the world center of the petrodollar, the world will collapse. And all the merchants of the earth and all the kings of the earth will mourn and wail over her destruction. That is the Babylon, the, the whore of Babylon, because the religion propagated by Mecca started in Babylon and moved to Mecca. And from Mecca comes the spiritual demons that have been released into the earth, and that 200 million man army crossing the Euphrates rivers, brother and sister, are not Chinese, they are Muslim or Islamist from the east crossing the Euphrates on their way to Yerushalayim. I'm telling you, I've got the truth, I've got hold of the truth, and I'm gonna share it with you over the next several months here. You don't wanna miss any of the meetings as Yahweh leads. Go with me please to Gileana. Gileana, and if you read Revelation, it makes sense. They were beheaded for the word of Yahweh. They were beheaded for the testimony of Yahweh. And, yet, and what about Revelation 13? The mark, what is the mark of the beast? First you gotta know who the beast is, then you'll know the mark of the beast. The beast is Islam, and the mark of the beast is Allah. In the name of Allah, the Twin Towers were taken down. In the name of Allah, we kill the Saturday people, and then we kill the Sunday people. We kill innocent people, we cut off heads. There's not a single nation on earth, the Catholic Church hasn't cut off anybody's head in what, six, seven hundred years? This is a, 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 a group of nations that are cutting people's heads off for the word of Yahweh and the testimony in the last generation. Sorry, brothers and sisters, the Catholics have, don't cut off people's heads. You need to get this truth. I'm going to move on and I'll never get to your questions. Giliana, Giliana chapter, it would be nice if I had the chapter. Giliana chapter 3, verse 2. Giliana, Revelation. I'm telling you, it's changing my life. You've got to understand Islam, peace or peace. You must understand it or you will be deceived. You absolutely will be deceived. I'll go further. Revelation and Zechariah and Jeremiah make no sense until you understand who the beast is and the mark of the beast. You know, waiting for this mystical figure, the Roman Antichrist, you know. And the false prophet, like, you know, it could be Kissinger, it could be Condoleezza Rice, all this weird stuff because nothing seems to fit, so we're grasping at straws. You know, it's, it's very simple. The creed of Islam is there is no God but Allah and Muhammad, his prophet. And that is said five times a day. The false prophet, you want to pray about that or you don't need to pray about that? The beast has the false prophet who propagates the image of the beast. And the mark of the beast is the multitude of his name. It's not the number. That word arithmos in Greek can be translated either number or the multitudes of that name who have the mark. The last empire was not the Roman Empire. It was the Turkish Ottoman Empire, whose capital was what? Turkey. And that is the Islamic Empire that will be revived. The beast had a wound that was healed. People say, this is like 7th century stuff. This is 6th century stuff. This is primitive. This is like in the days of the caves. That's right. It's the healing and revival of the wound of the last beast empire, the Islamic empire of the Ottoman Turkish empire. And Revelation says, Pergamos, modern Turkey, where the throne of the beast is. That's what Revelation says. Pergamos is where Satan's throne is. Oh, come on, this is easy stuff, once you get it. Let's go, let's continue. I don't want to get off topic. Gileana 3.2. But when I teach this thing, it will change your life that I prophesied to you. You will come to me and hug me and kiss me. Because for the first time, the end time scriptures are going to make sense. Right now, they kind of make sense. So it's A doesn't make sense, B doesn't make sense. But I'll choose C because it makes the most sense. Yahweh doesn't do things in secret. Revelation means it's a revealing of the truth. We don't have to choose the scenario that fits best. Yahweh shows us clearly that the end time beast is Islam and the false prophet is Muhammad. If 
we take Yahweh at his word, the Bible is full of clues. Because from Genesis to Revelation, it is the struggle of Israel versus Ishmael. That doesn't change in the last book. It continues throughout biblical history. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Gilead are three and two. Talking about New Year. Be watchful on this New Year. Aviv 1. Revelation 3 2. Strengthen the things that remain. Yahweh was raising up your tabernacle, your body, the temple of the Ruach HaKadosh, that are ready to die. For I have not found your mitzvah perfect before Yahweh. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast. Make Teshuvah. If therefore you shall um, not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you shall not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. They will walk with me in white. They are worthy. He that overcomes, the same will be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the scroll of Chaim, book of life, but will confess his name before my Abba and before what? His heavenly Malachim. So what is the charge to the Kehillah at Sardis? Strengthen what remains. Don't go looking after another man's gift, another man's calling, another man's work, another man's ministry. Strengthen the things Yahweh gave you 20, 30 years ago that are about to die and do Teshuvah and walk in the calling and the anointing that Yahweh has given you. So Aviv 1 is a time to rekindle and raise up and strengthen your tabernacle. And one of the 144,000 is going to be anointed and ordained on this day, Aviv 1. Because Yahweh never changes. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Moshe raised up the tabernacle, the Ohel Moe, and fastened its sockets, set up its board. Verse 18, Shemot 40, raised up its pillars. What are the pillars? That's right, Father, Son, and Spirit. The three primary pillars are manifestations of Yahweh, the Echad. Verse 32, back to Shemot 40, 32. I'm going quickly, so please forgive me. I want to get to your questions. Part 2, raising up your tabernacle. Part 2, raising up your tabernacle. Exodus Shemot 40, 32. When they went into the tent of the congregation and came near to the altar, they washed as Yahweh commanded Moshe. He raised up the cord around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the cord. Moshe finished the work. Therefore, the water is symbolic of a clean life and an effective witness and an effective testimony because of what? Purity. What do we learn on Shabbat? The anointing is to make you what? Kadosh, and the Kadosh is to bring you into what? A closer walk or relationship with Yahweh. So the finish, the tabernacle was finished. Okay. Isn't that what Yahweh wants to do in your life? Finish the work. Philippians 1.6. He that began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Messiah Yeshua. But he wants you to strengthen the things that remain, saying, this is your tabernacle. It is yours. You do with it. You, I'll go where you want. I'll say what you want. I'll associate with whom you want. I will be obedient. And those things that I didn't do that you wanted me to do, I will allow you through accountability, through submission, through your word, to strengthen those things in my life that... If I don't strengthen now, I'm going to lose those things. I'm going to lose those, those blessings, that anointing, that calling. So the New Year is unlike the world. that uses it for debauchery and drinking and all kinds of, of indulgences of the flesh. We use it to strengthen. Isn't that what we're doing tonight? Singing, praising, liturgy, talking, encouraging, shouting. Hey! We are strengthening ourselves on New Year's, right? We're not, hi, boy. Where'd you put the friggin' keys? No, man. We're not doing that. We're encouraging each other. We're admonishing each other. Frogging, I said frogging keys. He raised up all around the tabernacle, meaning the whole thing was raised up. Isn't that what Yahweh wants to do in your life? That's right. Strengthen every part of your walk. The finished work of Yeshua is to cleanse our tabernacle, to make us every way clean and cut up. But it is up to us to live Kadosh. It is up to us to cleanse ourselves with the clean water that Yeshua gives us and not the filth of his age. Where can I find living water? <laughs> Yeshua said, woman, if you keep drawing from this well, Jacob's well, you're going to thirst again. I will give you living water that a man or a woman may drink and never thirst again. 
So the yeah. living water is found in the things of Yahweh. Yes, yes, yes. And the people of Yahweh, and the commands of Yahweh, and the blood of Yeshua, and the eternal things of Yahweh. That's where the Mayim is found. Notice, it's okay to drink from Jacob's well, but first you gotta go to Yeshua's well of cleansing. Cleansing leads to Kedushah, and Kedushah leads to